Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Greenwood and Mullen show here on Newcastle Fans TV. And we have an FA Cup hero of 2021. It is the Chorley striker, Connor Hall. Connor is a massive Newcastle United fan. If you haven't seen the clip uh, on Newcastle Fans TV in so many different media outlets, um, he shows that he's a massive, massive Newcastle fan. He wanted them in the fourth round. Unfortunately, Newcastle uh, couldn't keep to their keep, unfortunately Newcastle couldn't keep to their side of the bargain. But it's great to have Connor on. Connor, welcome to the Green and Mullins Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on. Brilliant, Sam. We, tr we thought this might be a bit of a uh, a tough one to get because I, I can imagine like loads of different media outlets have had Connor on different yeah. interviews in the last couple of weeks. But when you it's something Newcastle related, it's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, let's face it. This is the closest we're getting to anything. Close to FA Cup magic tonight. <laughs> this is as good as it gets for us now. We're all going to be supporting Chorley, especially where I am in the Midlands, because I bloody hate Wolves. So I know <laughs> who you got in the next round. But yeah, this is as good as it's going to get for um, Newcastle fans this season. Yeah, 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 I don't blame you. Connor, it's been a whirlwind few months, obviously, joining Crawley, uh, Crawley? I'm saying Crawley, Chorley rather. <laughs> we'll get it right eventually. Joining Chorley on the 30th of October, just initially on loan. Uh, just last year. Um, how did the move actually come about? Because I say you were at Woken for a little bit. Did, it is a bit of a spiritual home for you, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. So um, I was there on loan from Bolton at the back end of last season. Uh, I joined in January. It was supposed to be obviously till the end of the end of the season, but I only ended up playing six games because of the COVID and stuff. So um, yeah, I went there and then I managed to get myself a move to Woken, which is a national league. Um, and I just it never really kicked off there to be honest. You know, I I, I didn't come back in great shape pre season and I wasn't I wasn't playing very well. So, you know, I never quite got um quite got my chance there and you know, I wanted to go out and play football and then um Chorley came about, I spoke to the manager because it was the same one that was there last year and you know, he was quite keen to get me on. So yeah, just just from there I had two loan spells and then decided, you know, I didn't want to go back. So <laughs> I liked it up here that much. Yeah, I was gonna say with you Obviously, you can tell you've got a massive northern accent. Um, <laughs> what is it about? What is it about the northwest that you just love? And is it just the fact that you're getting regular football and you just you see it be flying with Chorley? Has to be said. Yeah, yeah. Well, like for those that don't know where it is, it's, it's literally just like a junction down the road from down the motorway from Bolton. So, you know, I've lived here for like this would be my fourth year now. So, you know, I just like it up here. I find the more the more north you go, the more the friendlier the people are. So, you know, I always prefer it sort of up north and that. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just I like it up here. My girlfriend's up here. You know, I've got a lot of my friends are still up here and stuff. So um, yeah, it was just a perfect move. Yeah, Sam, it's always better to be up north. I'm telling you, you, should, you need to get a lot of step by step. I know there's there's nothing wrong. It just goes to show there's nothing wrong with not having a northern accent either. It just you know. <laughs> but I do agree though. I, every time you go up north, it just seems uh, it's just better in every way. Yeah, I hate coming back down south. It is yeah. cheaper as well, isn't it? <laughs> <Exactly. Your heights. laughs> in a normal world anyway um yeah. yeah connor let's let's go straight into this fa cup journey because it all started in a, with a, a local derby like i know a i know a wigan fan and he, he's a massive wigan fan and he mentioned chorley and he was he said oh he talked about the 12 nil win i said no no the one that actually chorley won after being two nil down and uh literally what a moment for yourself connor obviously two nil down against a league one side in Wigan obviously have won the FA Cup in 2013 so to to beat a team of, of their stature must have been amazing I bet you didn't think at 2-0 down you were going to be the hero no definitely not I think um you know just before half time they were 2-0 up uh, and then Harry Cardwell the guy I play up front with has gone through on goal got taken down just outside the area and they had the red card and you know, you could sense at half time, even though we were two 0 down, there was that bit of belief. You know, like we can, we can go on and do this because, you know, I don't know how many people on here watch the game, but we weren't getting battered. Like we had a few chances of our own. You know, that we probably should have put away. Um, I had one that I probably, well, I got booked for diving in the end. I probably shouldn't have gone down. <laughs> should have tried to stay on my feet. But um, yeah, so we had, we had quite a bit of the ball, and it was, you know, in the second half we just. That, well, first and foremost, at half time, the gaffers just said, you know, you're 2 0 down. No one expects you to win. Just go out there and show the world what you can do because it was getting streamed on BBC. So um, we went out there and we we absolutely dominated the second half. Like I, I can't remember them having a 
a clear cut chance apart from Scotty Lever, our centre back, having to clear one off the line. But they, we were literally just all over them. Um, and then obviously went to extra time, managed to get managed to get my goal pretty early on. I think it was about a minute into extra time, and then you know we managed to hold on and, and get the win, which is which was amazing. It's a fantastic result, and it's always great to see. I know it's cliche with this magic of the FA Cup, but it is still alive and kicking, isn't it? But for for teams like Chorley and around that level, how big a deal is the FA Cup to get a cup run in, or is it just more focused like? We know, you know, promotion, promotion. Is it is it always in the back of a player's mind that we want a good cup run in the FA Cup? Yeah, I think for every non-league club, it, it's essential because of the the financial side of things. You know, like off the top of my head, we've been told that Chorley had set to make over half a million pounds just from our cup run so far. You know, and that's um, that's with TV money, with progression through rounds and stuff like that. You know, and. I think they're doing that whole virtual ticket sales like Marine did for the for the next round as well. So, you know, hopefully they'll make even more. And it's just it's just amazing. Like, you know, they were struggling financially back in the last year, uh, well, last season, sorry. So, you know, for us to do this sort of run, it will keep the club running for years and years, you know. Like for Premier League clubs, they don't really, they don't really see how much of an effect it has on lower leagues. So, yeah, everyone, everyone wants to, everyone wants a good cup run. But, then, like you said, promotion's always a, a aim as well. Like we didn't start off the season great. Um, I wasn't here, so I don't really know what was happening. To be honest, we weren't like they weren't winning any games and and stuff. But we've managed to boost up the league, and you know we're not too far off the playoff stages at the minute. I mean, we lost we lost last night, but you know it was just that was a poor result. But you know we're still in good form, and we're still hoping to at least make the playoffs this year. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's so close to get into the playoffs, and you see some of the teams that are in that division. Like these, some of these teams have been football league clubs back in the day as well. So it, it's it's a tough, tough league in that in that division. Um, but you talk about obviously the FA Cup being so important, but I think your form as well, Connor, has been absolutely brilliant. Like ten and nineteen in your Chorley career, seven and thirteen this season in all competitions. You know that's one and two, just well, just under just over one and two. That's at some form, do you just seem to relish every opportunity to play football, especially in the circumstances that we face at the minute? Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's been hard the last few years because when I've been at Bolton and stuff, I was on the fringes. I was training with the first team every day, come to a weekend, and I wouldn't make I wouldn't make the squad. Um, I'd you know I'd train hard during the week, and then I get told Friday that I'm not even travelling or not even report for the game. I then have to play for the under twenty threes, which was you know. The twenty three the twenty three reason I first came was the making of me, to be honest. I had a, I had a great season there. I I broke the league record for the amount of goals for that for that league since they've been redeveloped. And that's been you know, that's an ongoing record, I think, you know, for like the league's been going nine, ten years now. So, you know, to still hold that as well was like that's what sort of pushed me on to first team football. And then, you know, I just never really you know, I played four games for the first team, I think, only started one. So it was, you know, it was very tricky to break through. Um but so coming, you know, coming to Chorley and stuff and playing every week, it's just, you know, I just see it as an opportunity that, you know, you never, you never guaranteed game time anywhere. So go there and just play as many games as I can and just do as well as I can. And, you know, I'm enjoying it, which is why I think I'm, I'm doing so well, just because I'm enjoying actually playing. Yeah, 100%. Obviously getting through against Wigan, another league one side, probably arguably the hardest draw that you could have got as Peterborough United away. Yeah, they were it, it was, very, very good team. The league. They were top of the league when we drew them, so it was literally the hardest one we could have got. Yeah, I was just going to say when you when you look at it, it was live on BT. You know, Saturday night, you're thinking, Phew, well, there's going to be quite a few million people watching this one around the UK in particular. What was the manager saying to you before you were playing this game? Was it similar to the, the Wigan game, or did he say, Do you know what? Let's see if we can actually beat these because. You've shown your worth a little bit by beating a team like Wigan in the same division. There's nothing stopping you beating a team like Peterborough United. And obviously you got the job done and it, it, it was fantastic scenes, and particularly at the end as well. Yeah, yeah. It it was strange. You went into the game like, you know, everyone, we knew like a lot of people know that Dembele that plays with them, cracking player. And we've done so much on him. Just like, and it, all the lads were just like, there's no way we're going to stop him. Like, he's that good and all that. <laughs> And then, um, so we went in with a bit of hope. Like, it, it was funny because after, like, I think it was the second last session before the actual game, our assistants, like, took the lads to the side. Gone, boys, like, I looked at Wigan, I thought, yeah, like, we can beat them. 
He goes, and I've looked at Peterborough. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great, great confidence for the lads. But, you know, he was like, he was like, no, we can, we can get at them. You know, they they haven't got the fastest, like, back line. Um, their midfield and is really good. But one, one of their strikers was injured. So he said, you know, that's another advantage for us. So it was just kind of a case of going out there and, you know, he basically said, all, all of you lot want to be playing in the Football League. So there'll be Football League managers watching, you know, all over the world, not even in England. So, you know, go out there, show what you can do. And, you know, some of you might get a move out at the end of it. So, you know, everyone was buzzing, thinking, yeah, yeah, like, we'll, we'll go in, you know, good start, stay in the game, we'll be fine. And then we were 1-0 down after 80 seconds. <laughs> so it's like, oh, we're going to get battered. But, you know, we, we went in at half-time, 1-0 down. We did the post twice. Um, we And we were playing really well. And we, we sat down, we're like, these, these, aren't, these aren't that good. These aren't unbeatable, you know. And we just had that bit of hope and we kept going, kept going. And, you know, we managed to get two goals in three minutes. Um, and then we, we missed the penalty as well that game. You know, so pe people forget, like, you know, two shots that hit the post that were very close. And obviously the penalty miss, you know, we, we probably deserved to win by three or four more goals. So, like, we just we just had such a good game. I think it's the best we've played as a team, to be honest, since I've been here around, definitely. Yeah, it was a superb performance and a, and a much deserved win. But um, just to pick up on something you said there about um, football league team scouts coming to watch the game and whatnot, um, how tricky is it for a player down in the kind of non-league pushing up to football league level? How competitive is it? Because I imagine there's quite a lot of insecurity in terms of contract lengths, and you know, Premier League players get four, five, six years for being bang average now. And then football yeah. league, you're doing one or two years. There's not really much kind of job security in a way. Just how tricky is it down there? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Like it's my first. So I, I signed my I signed for a professional club when I was just before I was 18, and it's you know it's the first time I've had to actually go and sign for a, a non-league club permanently. And I'm 20, 22 now. I'm 23 next month. So it's it's difficult because you've you know you can play really well every week, but then everyone says. Oh well, that's that's in that league, you know. You couldn't do it in this league and all that, and you know you hear stories of people moving up the leagues, doing well and stuff. But you know it's it's very difficult because you look at players like like a standard a standard example nowadays is Vardy. You know you look yeah. at him, he was just he's just unbelievable, and he, you you're not realistically in the next ten years going to find a talent like that in non-league, and that's what everyone's looking for. So you've got to be at that sort of that sort of level, you know. So. For me, it's just a case of you know playing every game and just just trying to score as many goals as I can. You know, I've managed managed to get myself on penalties now, which helps. So, um, yeah, it's it's difficult, but at the end of the day, that's that's my aim and that's a lot of our lads' aim as well because a, a lot of them are sort of early to mid twenties, sort of age wise. So everyone's looking looking for a move up. Hundred percent, mate. And you, you might be short of a few. You might not be short of a few offers, mind uh, Connor. In the, in, the, in the coming months with the amount of goals you've been scoring at the minute. But you look at that Peterborough game, obviously, if you were on penalties that day, it might yeah. have been 3-1 one, or 4-1, one, as you mentioned. But <laughs> it's, again, taking the goal very well. It was almost an, almost like an accident goal, as I like to call, because when the ball was played through, it seemed that the Peterborough's defence just stopped and you were the only one that was switched on. Literally one touch, keep us coming out, and you drill it past him. And you just you must be think you must be over the moon. You must be absolutely buzzing. To get the team back level, one one second half game on, and like you say, two minutes later you, you win it. That whirlwind of emotion, I can't, I can't, yeah. I can describe. I don't know if you can. No, it, it was crazy, mate. Honestly, like it, it was funny actually because um, Beavers, who played centre half for uh, uh, Peterborough, I was with him at Bolton. Um, yes. So I was like, it was when I was just kind of up and coming, sort of thing, into the first team. And uh, whenever we did shape on a Friday and stuff, um, he would always be starting and I, I wouldn't be involved. So I'd always just be chatting to him because we'd be playing against them. And um, there was a few times I remember like I got in behind him and stuff. Like He's a great defender, but I'd, I always knew I had that little bit of sharpness more than him. So going into the game, I had that had that confidence. Um, and yeah, it was him I actually managed to get in behind for the goal. And, you know, the touch took me probably not as... Sort of kind of like when I took the touch, it kind of took me sideways rather than sort of diagonal. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily where, you know, I didn't give myself an, e an easy shot, but you know, I managed to squeeze it in near post and um, get the equaliser. And then for the for the winner to come so soon after as well, you know, it's like you still you're still buzzing from the equaliser and then like to get the winner. And then you know, the last half an hour of the game felt like about two hours long. You know, <laughs> you're just waiting, trying waiting for the ref to blow the full time whistle, but. 
yeah, when it came, it was amazing, mate. Amazing. Best feeling I've ever had since I've been a player. Is it more pressure in the second round than the first round? Because you know, in the back of your mind, if we get through this third round draw, it's like the one thing that everybody watches is that third round draw. Who are the big teams going to face? Who are the teams that are coming up, like the long lead teams, who they're going to face? Is that always in the back of your mind? Or is it the first round because you've actually made it to the first round proper? On Honestly, for me, for me, I found more pressure in the first round because uh, I didn't play the... Uh, I think we had two qualifying games and then I think we were actually the only team to get a bye in the in the last qualifying round wow. so you know, that that went in our favor but you know I wasn't actually here when when all them games were played and and the bye happened so my first FA Cup game was the Wigan one and um to, when we were 2-0 down we were all like yeah like we're out in it just try and not make this a cricket score sort of thing but you know to get back from that you're thinking anything from now is a bonus you know and then to get Peter Rowe, like, our oh, best team in League One, you know, we just go out there, you know, we shouldn't even really be in round two, you know, being <laughs> on league side, being Conference North, you know, being 2 nil down against the League One side, you know, so we just we just felt lucky to be there. So I felt more pressure in the first round, definitely. And the second round, it was more go out there, do as well you can, you know, just prove, prove to managers out there that a lot of you are good enough to play in, in League Two, League One, you know. I mean, Newcastle never get a bloody bye. We need one. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, when you were watching, <laughs> when you were watching the third round draw, um, were you thinking, "Oh, just home, home tie, home tie"? We want someone at home, or were you thinking Newcastle away? I want Newcastle away. Yeah, definitely, definitely Newcastle away. To be honest, obviously, I, I always wanted Newcastle, but you know, at the end of the day, you just want any big Premier League team away, don't you? Um, and then we got home draw against Derby, which everyone's like, you know, that's, that's a bit crap because you know, <laughs> they're, really they're, they're a team that's a lot better than us and we're going to lose, but it's not a big, big side, you know. So, you know, like, oh, it's, like, it's a little bit rubbish that, especially it being at home as well. But um, yeah, with them with them obviously having COVID and stuff, uh, you know, it, it, help, it helps us a lot then playing them young lads um, get through to get through to the next round. So, yeah, it was it was good. I love the fact that as soon as Derby comes out of the hat, you're thinking, oh, for goodness sake, man, give us a, give us a prem team moment, that's mid lot. <laughs> yeah, like, it was literally, it was funny, yeah, because whenever a, um, it, it was happened in the last round as well, when the draw was getting done, whenever like a, like a Barnsley or a Crawley was getting drawn out, everyone was like, no, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we, uh, we managed to, uh, yeah, we managed to get through Derby and then, you know, we've got Wolves now next round. So Premier League team, it is at home, but it'll be on telly again. Um, so you know everyone's everyone's buzzing with that. You can't not be happy with a, a Premier League side. Bear in mind they just missed out on, um, or they just missed out Champions League last last year, didn't they? So um, yeah, everyone's everyone's over the moon with it. Exactly. I was just going to say when you played you played Derby, obviously, uh, obviously just last Saturday, and obviously it's on BT again. Everyone's thinking, well, can this non-National League team beat Wayne Rooney? Nobody even mentions Derby County. It's Wayne Rooney, isn't it? And, Wayne Rooney, yeah. Yeah, and you're just thinking, oh, the questions are coming. And yes, it was a different Derby County team, but there's still that pressure of getting the job done. And obviously, your goal scoring run continues. It almost with a bit of head tennis in the box, and you're there, Shira esque, two yards out just to make sure it goes <laughs> over the line. And, yeah, but obviously, black and white stripes, nicknamed the Magpies. Newcastle fan, it's written in the stars that you're going to score when the cameras are on you, uh, third round day. Yeah, you know what's mad actually. Like we've um, obviously Chorley have always played in stripes, uh, and this year they've changed it to just a pure white kit. But for the FA Cup game, they brought back the the black and white stripes with the with a JD sponsor <laughs> and all that. So you know, yeah, there it is there on on the screen. So you know, for to bring that back and then like like you said, nickname Magpies is almost written written in the stars in it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, but. Yeah, obviously you, you wrap up the game in the in the second half, 2-0. What a what a per performance by everybody associated with the club. And I don't know if you know this, Sam, uh, before I mention it, Callum, I have to give a bit of a shout out and we're gonna get his name right, Ben K. Yeah. yeah. No Connell knows straight away who we're on about sitting on the pitch that the groundsman did to make sure this game was going ahead because I know it was in the minuses um on Saturday in the northeast. I I'm sure it was as well in the northwest as as well, Sam. And sleeping on the pitch in the four, four o'clock in the morning to make sure this game goes ahead, to make sure Connor gets that header two yards out uh, to get through against Derby. It's that you said it before, it's the magic of the Cups, Sam, but that is just an unbelievably good story, isn't it? Yeah, no pressure then. 
did you know beforehand <laughs> the groundsman had been sleeping on the pitch to get the game on? <laughs> I mean, yeah, because well, I, I didn't know he was going to be staying there. I knew he had put this way, he had a lot, a lot of work to do because you know we didn't have a home game for a while before the things before the FA Cup. So you know there was always that thing. Oh, we're not going to play on it for a while. It'd be fine, but you know it snowed and then like no like we didn't necessarily have the equipment to be able to get the snow off so we kind of waited for it to melt but then it all got really cold and it didn't snow and it turned into ice so it was just like the worst <laughs> possible combination so it was about two days before mate like even when we got the tent up it was still pure ice on the pitch like I was thinking there's no chance this is going to be on like and you know he's done fair play to him he's done so well and he's just been like uh he's just been invited to the uh, final as well by the yeah. uh, Billy Groundsman to, to come nice. to the day and help him out with the pitch. So, you know, he deserves it. He's, he's a top bloke as well. He does so much around the around the club. So, yeah, he deserves it. Yeah, fantastic. It's a great it's a great story. But you you, you mentioned the fact that you threw at the forefront. Before we talk about the fact that you're going to be taking on Wolves, obviously I was in Newcastle, I've faced numerous times. Um, two big things that came out, obviously, after the game. A message from your hero, Alan Shearer. Yeah, yeah. That must be what what a moment, what a feeling that must be that you're just sitting and you get a nice little uh, quote tweet from uh, Mr. Shearer. Yeah, honestly, mate, I, I don't remember much of it. I was so bladdered. Like, I had so many beers <laughs> after the game. Like we were all just we were all we were all just celebrating after. Like someone brought a crate of beer to the to the changing room, and you know we all just started sinking them. Obviously, we couldn't really do anything, but. You know, I was, I was just, I ended up coming home on this and just, you know, just, we were just having a few drinks and that. And, you know, I hadn't eaten or drunk any water after the game, just straight on the beers. And I just thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just try it. Because I spoke to that uh, Ian Abrahams. Um, he's like a, oh, yeah, was, oh, yeah, yeah. Talk he interviewed me after. And he was like, oh, I oh, know, like, she was like, you hear her and stuff. So, you know, like, I might be able to have a word with him or like, if you send him a tweet or something like that might be able to sort sort you out with like a like a little a little message or whatever i was like yeah yeah and then like i just couldn't wait i just had to do it myself just straight straight onto twitter just send him a little message and you know it was good he actually he actually messaged me um either yesterday morning or the, the morning before privately on twitter saying he'd, he'd do an interview with me next week so oh, I've got that look forward to and on it honestly it's just it's the best thing in the world that is, I'm jealous. We don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not professional footballers that are trying to get through the fifth round of the cup. Sam's a bit different. <laughs> um, Fair point. Oh, that is. I bet you must be looking forward to that so much. Yeah, it was a nice. It was a nice surprise actually because I just like I, I was having a bit of a lie in because I was off the next day. I was off that day, sorry. And um, you know, I woke up, knackered, looked at my phone, and I was just like scrolling through messages and see, nah. I just see sure. I was like, nah, I've look, looked on it, yeah. Seen the message, seen the blue tick, and I've actually clicked on his profile to check it's not someone like <laughs> some man with me. And I was like, oh, my days is actually him. So, um, yeah, he messaged me that. And then he messaged me again today, actually, just like confirming the date and stuff. So, oh, mate, it's just like I'm in dreamland. <laughs> that is just yeah, absolutely. Just mention uh, Newcastle fans TV. So <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> I'll see what I can do if I remember. <laughs> that, I <laughs> uh, and the last thing on that on that day before we talk about Wolves, that viral clip of his all singing Adele. Where mm. on earth did that come from? Like, what's what, why why that song? Why Adele? Is, is it who came up with it? Did you have any involvement in it? uh no not me personally like it was a song that was kind of introduced a bit before a few years before i was here actually you know the gap the gaffer the current gaffer used to be a player at chorley and he said you know while he was here they still they were doing that and stuff and you know the first the first i heard of it was um two years ago when they got promoted from national north to national league so a few of the boys are still there now than were there and that, that was the first they all heard of it but you know it, i think i think it's more more gaffer's choice than anyone to be honest but <laughs> yeah it's um you know obviously clips going viral and stuff there was there was a lot of people going on about social distancing and stuff at the time but you know there's not a lot we can do in the size of our change room you know the the lads all test everyone in that change room tested negative before the game as well so you know all the precautions precautionary things were taken so um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling to win the game, and you know, to, to be able to celebrate in some some form of way. Not maybe how we would have liked, but you know, it's, it's still it's still great nonetheless. <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant to see. It was just absolutely cracking. So I'm guessing, like at the end of that night, 
when Shear is messaging you and you have no clue, you're you're on Adele's early work. You're on a first album by then. You're just going through the back catalogue. Right. <laughs> She actually, she actually replies. So she barely tweets, doesn't she? She, I think yeah. she had, she's tweeted twice in the last three years, or something like that. And she actually replied to Chorley's, to Chorley's <laughs> tweet with like a heart of us, of us singing, and everyone was like, "Oh, that's it." Like ben, ben K actually replied, was like, "Oh, fancy coming to Chorley Beer Festival when all this is over." <laughs> <laughs> that's class. That's yeah, absolutely good, good publicity man. for the club. Uh, could Still you imagine her rocking up to Chorley Beer Festival? That would yeah, be some be. scenes, man. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I imagine uh, having better offers to be honest but there we go well hopefully Ben's not listening to that um, <laughs> anyway Chorley versus Wolves in the fourth round and if you get through the fifth round you potentially could take on Arsenal uh, Connor but Wolves what a squad they've got by the way and they always take every competition seriously League Cup FA Cup it doesn't matter you're going to be playing a very very tough team um, you, you look at the defenders in particular Connor Cody Willie Bolly mm-hmm. they're the sort of players that you're going to be up against um Connor Cody, England international. You're putting your wits against him. That, that's that's got to be something that you're looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's you know it's it's a great draw to have, and you know knowing Wolves' squad, they haven't got loads and loads of depth. So a lot of the players that do play in the Prem will be playing, you know, against us. So you know, just you just got to hope that they sort of treat us with respect, you know, and play and play a good side because at the end of the day, we want to win, but we don't care if we lose if we're playing against eleven Premier League starters every week. You know, like it'd be a great experience for everyone, and you know, good for us to kind of test ourselves against the best players in well, some of the best players in the world. You know, if you look at Traore, been at Barca, he's probably he's probably one of the fastest players footballers in the world, if not the fastest at the minute. So. You know, if he plays, you know, all the best of Bainsey are left back, but you know, <laughs> it would be, be brilliant for us. 100%. Well, all, all the best of luck in regards to that game, but let's talk about Newcastle. Sam, I wonder how, there's so many, I didn't realise how many Newcastle fans there were that out, were outside of the area, outside the North East in general, obviously yourself and Carl who are, and Brandon, they're massive, massive fans of Newcastle. Obviously, you work for the yeah. channel, but um, can you describe Sam before we talk with Connor? why Newcastle is just the team to follow or why you chose Newcastle all those years ago? Well, yeah, the thing is with me, though, I'm at an age when, when I was growing up because none of my family were into football, so it wasn't like passed down to write that to you supporting tough shit like it is with my kids. <laughs> they ain't got a choice. So with me, it was that Kevin Keegan entertainers team and then when you're in your teenage years, it was the Sabobi team, so it was just a real inspiring team. I didn't know that when I was five years, six years old, watching Kevin Keegan's side, that Newcastle was 220 miles away. I didn't know that. But um, it was just that team, that brand of football, which is the complete polar opposite of what we've got at the moment, isn't it? But, you know, it's... Um, and then when you get to know about the area and, and more about it, it's just... You, you just know you've made the right decision, despite everything. <laughs> what about you, Connor? Where, why Newcastle? Uh, so my dad is from there initially, doesn't have a Geordie accent, but his, uh, so my, my gran is a Sunderland supporter and my granddad's a Newcastle supporter. <laughs> so you know, I've had the choice and, you know, he's obviously made a cracking decision in choosing Newcastle. <laughs> so, you know, it's just followed down, followed down me and my little brother support him. So, um, yeah, that's why. So tough times at, at the moment, but, you know, it's, it'll be all right, I'm sure. Yeah, I was just going to say, can you remember like a, the first game or the first kit, or is it like like a sheer that you've mentioned? What, what was the moment that you could that first moment you could remember about being a Newcastle supporter? Uh, on, honestly, I, I can't remember who we were playing. It might have been Aston Villa, but my first game I ever went to was when um, Lee Bowyer and Kieran Dyer had that fight on the no pitch. No way! Yeah, that was my first ever game I went to, and I was thinking, God, what wow, a, you know, but. Um, yeah, that was my earliest, earliest memory. Like that was the first game I remember watching. Um, I used to go watch them, you know, obviously because I'm like south, south, like near Reading. So yeah. initially, so my um, when Reading were in the Prem, we used to go and watch them against against Newcastle all the time. Um, when they managed to play them, but um, you know, since they've been relegated, they've not they've not really been back up. And to be honest, I haven't had much of a chance to go myself recently because of games and and that. But you know, it's um. I still watch him on telly when I can. You know, I was in, in the change room last night while the gaff was doing his talk, just kind of having the game on my phone, just like, you know, just on the sly. So um, yeah, nice. No, it's, uh, it's good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 
glad to be a fan of them, proud to be a fan of them. I can't believe your first game was when there was a scrap, a 3-0 defeat at home and, and another red card because obviously that was the game as well where Steven Taylor p- pretended to be shot. Was that the same game, was it? Where it yeah, was on the line, uh, where... three red cards and a 3-0 defeat. Um, I'd have been looking at my old man going, why the heck have you brought me here? No, I, do, <laughs> I, do remember, I do remember that. I don't remember the actual uh, red card of Stephen Taylor's. Uh, obviously, I know which one you're on about, but I do remember them scoring a, I think they scored a penalty with Shea, Shea given in goal at the time, was he? I think that was, yeah, uh, yeah so that was, that was probably my earliest memory. Obviously not the best, but you know, I've seen them win a few times as well, so I'll take that. Yeah, I was just going to say, what is is there a, is there a favourite moment that, or a favourite game that you've been to Obviously, you talk about the Villa game as one of the first ones, but maybe in the maybe the last few years, I don't know if it was a, a derby game or against Man United. Has there been a moment where you've been there in the last few years and you go, "Wow, I'm so glad I'm here." Uh, honestly, last few years I haven't I haven't been because you know we've been pl- I've been playing on a Saturday every pretty much every every time. But you haven't missed much, huh? You haven't <laughs> missed much. No, I, I do. Um, I do remember, but probably one of the best ones we had was. Uh, the year after we got relegated to the championship uh, and then we went straight back up but the last it was the last game of the season where we had to win and Bright, I think was it Brighton had to lose or t- yeah. something like that and you know we managed to get the win and Bright, Brighton lost 2-1 or something and you know I remember sat there with my dad watching it thinking you know that's, that's amazing you know like you know to go up like not just to get automatically promoted because I was getting so much stick from my mates being like you know, like oh, not even winning the champ. You know, thinking you're a, thinking you're a big club and all that. So, um, yeah, that that was a, that was a great moment because you know it's a bit of relief thinking you know we should go up, but you know until it actually happens, you don't you don't really have that have that proper thing where you're like oh, you know it's definitely gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen, and then yeah, when it does, it's just a big relief. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. When you look at it like this season, Connor, and obviously I know you try and watch Newcastle as much as you physically can. Steve Bruce is under a lot of pressure. Obviously, Newcastle lost 1 0 yesterday. Obviously, we've seen some of the game, we've seen the penalty incident, and mm. obviously, Ryan Fraser being sent off. It's, it's a bit yeah. it's a bit toxic with the club a little bit at the minute. Um, where do you stand with it? Do you think Steve Bruce should be given a bit more time? Do you think maybe a change is right? Or do you think that Newcastle have just got to kind of get through this season and see what happens in the summer? Yeah, it's a strange one. Like you know, we have we have spent a bit of money. Don't get me wrong. Like it's not like we've gone into the league not having any funds to spend. You know, obviously we've got Wilson for twenty odd mil, Fraser probably for a similar sort of price. And it's like you know, we have spent that money. And to be fair, Wilson out of all of them has probably done okay. You know, scored the most goals. You know, been sort of clinical for us under pressure. But you know, it's the football we're playing at the minute isn't isn't brilliant. The our whole sort of tactic isn't, you know, it doesn't really seem to be working, you know, going into games. I think I saw something the other day, we've had the lowest amount of possession, we've had the lowest touches in the opposition box out of everyone in the Prem. And it's just like, you know, it's you know, it's not great football to watch. But for me, I thought we actually started off OK, you know, like picked up results even when we weren't playing well. But I think our whole, like, our taxes have kind of caught up on us a bit and we're not really... You know, put. You know, we're not getting results. I think what is it? We've we've not we've won one in nine, or we've not won in nine, or something like that. And it's just you know, it's it's not great. We need to, something needs to change. Whether that's formation, whether that's manager, you know, but something needs to be done, really, doesn't it? For for non-league teams like Chorley, how much work on the training ground goes into kind of shape and you know formation and tactics and looking at each opposition individually, or is it just Let's concentrate on our own thing, and you know whatever or whatever happens, happens. Yeah, well, we we have we have two kind of set formations that we'll play. You know, we'll either play like a, a four one three two or like a, a five one or, or like a five three two. It'll, yeah, it's, it's it's like different sort of positions, but it's it's pretty much the same. It's just an extra player at the at the back. Um, so we kind of already know what we're doing, but they always we always look at opposition and say, you know, this is how they play this is their strengths and this is how we can nullify their strengths and this is their weakness and this is how we can expose their weakness sort of thing, you know. Like, it's really, it's really that simple. Like, you know, you find out what their weak points are and you literally play on that. Like, we knew, for example, the FA Cup game we knew the other day, they were going to be, you know, not as physical as us. Our strikers, six foot two, six foot three, massive guy, wins every head as he's against people that are bigger than him. So, we know if we 
twat the ball up to him, he's going to nod it down and we're going to get on the end of it, you know? Like, it's just it's just standard it's just standard non-league football but at the end of the day it's what you have to do to win games so there's always there's always some sort of tactic that's how that's how we play anyway i know a lot of a lot of teams are different but there's always there's always tactical ways of, of beating teams see it sounds quite professional that son it sounds like actually <laughs> something that we should be doing a bit more often anyway to yeah. say the least but uh you, know, you talk about Callum wilson i think that's a really good point that you mentioned before he's 20 million pounds scored eight goals already this season and obviously he was unlucky last night not to score. He had a header that just went wide, and he had that header, good... wasn't it? From uh, was it Fernandez or Shaw? Yeah, oh. Fernandez mm. with, a, with a great mm. cross uh, last night. And um, how impressive has he been, uh, Connor? Because to come into a new club, yes, I know he's uh, he's a Premier League proven player, but to come to a different club, obviously it's not the bottom of the south of the country is right up north, and he has to try and get settled in quite quickly because he is the main man at Newcastle. He has that pressure. He seems to have taken a, like a duck to water for the first half of the season, like with, with to mention eight goals. Do you think he can only get better? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's difficult. The way we play doesn't necessarily suit him. I don't think. Like, you know, if you look at I don't know, you look at how Bournemouth plays. You know, they were they were playing quick in the middle, getting it wide to Fraser or get getting it in behind, and balls coming in and him, him scoring from there. And that's how he got so much success there. And, and we don't really have that, you know, that player that's going to necessarily. Get on it, running behind, especially with Saint Maximum being injured for the last few games. He's not, you know, he's the one of the only players we've got. I think that can, you know, you think he's going to go take on the world, and then he'll give him a chance, you know. So I, I've been really impressed with him though since he, since he has been here. Like he scored a few penalties and stuff, which you know that a lot of people say they're easy, but they're not. When you know you look at the Spurs one, pretty much what was it yeah. ninety minute or something, you know, to to equalise, you know, and it's you know you look at stuff like that and think you know you're carrying the team sort of thing in a way with his goals because i don't know what the second highest score is after him i can't imagine it's any more than two to be honest so jeff hendrick too there we go yeah wow. jeff hendrick <laughs> so and one of his was first game of the season as well wasn't it against against west ham so yeah it's just yeah, it's, it's it's difficult at the minute i think if we found a way to get him more in games and get him more chances we will be so much more successful hundred percent. Because even with the fact that he's been so isolated, and especially that yesterday, so isolated, but he still have managed two chances on goal, which I don't think we would have got of Joe Linton anyway. Uh, there's a question that's coming for you, Connor. Which Wolves player do you want to swap shirts with the most? And obviously, COVID restrictions, of course. But if there's a particular Wolves shirt or Wolves player you want to try and swap with, who you who you're running towards at the end of the game? Uh, you mentioned him before, probably Connor Cody. Especially if if he play, obviously if he plays. Um, you know, I'll be up against him. It'll be a great experience for me, personally, playing against uh, an England international, a, a Premier League, well, one of the best Premier League defenders of of last season. So, you know, it'll be a great test for me, and you know, it'll be a good, good little reward at the end of it if I did manage to to get his shirt. Yeah, he's he's a hell of a player, isn't he? he just he, yeah. he's a he's in fact he's a centre midfield, and he's dropped back, yeah. and he can play with some lovely through balls, and he's. Obviously, just excelled at Wolves as well. So it'd be really fascinating to see how you get on, Connor. But finally, before we end, um, when you look at your career in the next few years, is the ultimate dream to play for Newcastle, or is it to get into the Football League? What 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 will be the moment you'll go? I think I've done it. I think I've done what I want to achieve in football. Yeah, obviously, you know, playing playing for Newcastle for me is like like the dream. You know, like it's a team I've wanted to. Or a team I've supported my whole life. Team I've I've always idolised and wanted to play for. Um, one of my one of my mates actually signed there uh, last season, two seasons ago. Jake Turner, keeper. Oh yeah, yeah. Bolton. Like I'm I'm really good mates with him. So you know I message him all the time and stuff, saying like, oh, like, how's it going and all that. You know, what's it like <laughs> at the club? Uh, he's been on loan this season, so he's not seen a lot of it, but. Yeah, I, I, you know, I speak to him all the time, and I'm, I'm really jealous of him. But yeah, I'd love to be, I'd love to be playing for Newcastle. But I think, you know, once I get back in the football league, which is, which is hopefully, you know, if not next season, the season after, um, I want to just kick on as much as I can. And you know, my, my motto for football is just play as high as you can for as long as you can, you know. But you know, make sure, make sure you're actually playing games like I am at the minute, you know, because you're not going to get picked up sitting on the bench for. a a championship side or a league one side you know you've got to drop down a couple of leagues to play then that, that's what you have to do so that's the right attitude sam isn't it yeah absolutely um and 
you know, kind of the, the form that you're in this season. I've no doubt you'll be back in the football league sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, just stick a couple past Wolves. <laughs> do best, mate. I do my best. I see some saying need to score four goals against Wolves to be top goal scorer in the FA Cup for non-league players. Wow. So you know, no pressure I do, then. I mean, I do my best. Yeah, literally yeah. no pressure. Yeah, but... <laughs> Well, if, it, if you beat Wolves, there's a chance to take on a huge club like Arsenal, who Newcastle have got next, and I'm sure you'll be watching that as well. But, um, Connor, it has been absolutely brilliant talking to you. As everybody from Newcastle fans here, all our co- uh, listeners and viewers, we'll just like wish you and Charlie all the very best for the game against Wolves uh, a week, uh, next weekend. I don't think it's been announced what day it's going to be yet, but, yeah, next weekend at some point. Uh, but, yeah, thank you very much for your time, Connor. Yeah, thanks very much for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, no Connor. Uh, nice for myself, Sam Mulner. And Charlie Straker, Connor Hall. We'll see you all very, very soon.